Welcome to Loving Beyond the I Do Podcast. This power couple is building stronger marriages one day at a time. Talking about real issues on love, relationships, and marriage longevity. Let's break down the barriers and engage in healthy conversation with your hosts, Jason and Tina Marie. Take a seat and buckle up because things are about to get real. Hey, 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 welcome to the show. Welcome back, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Love and Beyond the I Do. With your hosts, Jason and Tina Marie. That's me. So this week we have a special guest with us. Yeah, we we, have- we're going to talk about some love. You know, every time I, I, I think about that <laughs> intro, you know, it's love, relationships, and marriage longevity. I think today we're going to really dive into some love. Marriage longevity? <laughs> oh, yeah. So we have our special guest with us today, Susan Broughton. And so she is going to share with us intimacy and love, right? And And a little bit of how to spice up that romance and keep it so we can have marriage longevity. Is that right, Susan? What are you bringing with us today? That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to bring all the intimacy, heart connection, passionate lovemaking, uh, feelings of pleasure, joy, connection, ecstatic states of bliss, um, a happy skip in your step, a twinkle in your eye, wow. and a little jiggle in your walk. <laughs> well, that sounds fantastic. Don't let so let's get right to it. So when we're talking about all of those wonderful adjectives that we're going to be doing, what yeah. is the base of it? How do we start down that path? Well, you start down the path and everything is good, which is why you got married, because everything was good. And then sooner or later, for 99% of couples, <laughs> It's not so good anymore. <laughs> right. It's real dull after a while, right? It's like the knife well, you haven't sharpened. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so well said. You know, it's funny. I was thinking about, you know, we, we talked about doing an episode on hot monogamy. The okay. idea that, you know, that I like to have, I, I use this phrase, the upward pleasure spiral. You can either be swirling down the toilet. Or you can be on the upward pleasure spiral. And for the last 15 years, I've been running two companies with my husband, who as of this year, we've been together 30 years. Okay. Our anniversary is this month, our 28th wedding anniversary. And we are having the best sex of our life. I'll be 60 this year. Wonderful. Wonderful. There's Which is nice. But we, yes. But we did, <laughs> but we did in all ways. Okay. Like about. Mm, 20 years ago, we ran into the stumbling blocks that most couples run into, which is that the new relationship energy kind of wears out. Right. And what you said, Tina Marie, the variety, it it's not there anymore. Absolutely. And that, if it's not finances, it's sex. sex. Yep. That gets couples divorce that ends up making them not want to be together anymore. And my husband and I were at that fork in the road and we saw all of our friends getting divorced. And we knew it wasn't money because we were with people who all had good jobs. And we thought, well, we don't, you know, there, but for the grace of God, go, I, I don't want to go there. What do we need to do? And we had a combination of problems that we went to a therapist for. Mm -hmm. But we also did a lot of homework, if you will, reading books and things. But we went to sex workshops. We live in California, where there are a lot of sex workshops. And it took so much courage to go to them. I can remember that a lot of times (laughs) when we would sign up for them. And I think we spent $30,000 fixing our marriage. But it would have cost us a lot more than that if we'd gotten divorced. divorced. And sex workshops are expensive. And especially if you have to fly in and get a hotel and all of that kind of stuff. And when we went to sex workshops, we realized that, okay, well, we didn't know so much. And yet it was so easy to learn. One of the things that's really great about sexuality is that the minute that you learn it, you know it. Wow. Wow. Okay. So much of the time, it doesn't take a lot of studying. Um, I'm writing two articles right now. I'm writing the 20 kinds of male and the 20 kinds of female orgasm. 
because I call myself an orgasmonaut, somebody who has <laughs> gone to the far reaches of orgasmic outer space. And I come back and I show you the map. And if you know it's possible, then it's pretty easy for you to do it too. You just didn't know it was possible or how to do it. Mm -hmm. And that's what we ended up doing was learning all these things and saying, wait a minute, not everybody's going to come to Northern California and get naked in a room full of people and learn how to have great sex. So why don't we create a company where we can essentially make these online programs that singles and couples can follow that teach these skills? And we started out teaching a bunch of orgasmic pleasuring skills, but then we realized that all the skills in the world don't mean anything if you don't have good communication. And it was good communication that was really, I think, the thing that broke through for for us in not only our own sex life, but in our business, teaching people. And we give this away. It's called the Sexual Soulmate Pact. And I'm going to teach your listeners how to do this because you have to know what you're going for. You have to keep things exciting, but you also have to understand that the masculine, you know, most of us are in a heterosexual monogamous relationship. Right. and The problem is that for men, they have the benefit of two things that we female ladies don't have. One is hemodynamics and the other one is testosterone. And we have testosterone as women, but we don't have that much testosterone, not as much as our men do. Right. And (laughs) so it, it makes them like perpetually horny for the most part. And everything I say always goes on a bell curve, right? There's always the big chunk in the middle that's the average, but there are always people who have very low testosterone, very Mm -hmm. low sex drive, or super high, and they want way more sex than their partner. But generally, men wake up and every morning they would love to have you just jump on top of them and use them and abuse them for their (laughs) tool, you know, and then hop off and go make them breakfast, you you know? Every morning, every night, every afternoon, every evening? (laughs) <laughs> well, let me ask you a question. So you said you didn't want to get a divorce. So you guys flew yeah. off to sex therapy, right? Yeah. So was it that you figured that it was sex that was the determining factor that you guys were you not having sex at that time? And so you figured, well, it must be sex that's going to help us because we're not having sex. So that must be the issue. Yeah, my husband always wanted to have sex with me, but I had never had an orgasm from intercourse in the first decade of our marriage. And um, after a decade of having intercourse with him, I just didn't really want to do it anymore. It wasn't that satisfying. It wasn't pleasuring. Mm -hmm. And he tried everything. God love him. He tried everything. (laughs) But we just didn't know what we didn't know. Absolutely. Then we learned, and then we started having really good sex together. And I find that when when a woman can't have orgasms from intercourse, and I'm talking about no clitoral stimulation directly to the clitoris, not just just a penis in a vagina having intercourse, that when a woman can't do it, and most cannot, she thinks it's just her. She thinks, oh, you know, my my genitals aren't the right, you know, everything's too far away or, you know, I'm just not the kind of woman who's lucky enough to have that. Or that's just the way it's supposed to be, right? Or that's just, or or we just, we just, right. We just settle. Right. (laughs) We, we settle and, and our partner thinks it's our, our fault or our problem too, because it's so good for them and so easy for them relatively. And what, what the truth is, is that orgasm from intercourse is a learned skill. And there are a couple of things that once you know what to do, you can easily have orgasms from intercourse without any additional clitoral stimulation because the vulva, our female genitals, our vagina is completely surrounded by erectile tissue. But remember when I was saying that there were two things that men have a little bit of a competitive advantage about? Mm -hmm. One is that they have this hemodynamics, and that's where. They have these long, if you think about a banana, um, and that's the penis. 
all the whole inside of the banana, all that fruit inside that skin is erectile tissue inside the penis. The penis is basically three erectile tissue chambers that with skin around it. You know, it's got a tunica <laughs> albuginea and then skin on top, but and some nerves and some, you know, blood vessels. And and it fills up really fast. The the blood can just run right in there. Sure. But for women, we're more like um, an English muffin with a lot of <laughs> nooks and crannies. So we have that same amount of banana or of erectile tissue, but we have it in a little shaft and two right. little arms and two big legs. And then we have a <laughs> urethral sponge and we have a perineal sponge. And if you look at all the spongy tissue in our vulva, it's completely wrapped, embraced around our vagina. But the problem is when we don't, when we don't easily have orgasms, then we want to rush sex, which makes it even worse because right. they have this hemodynamics, which is like this, woo, the blood just flows around. And we have the butter has to seep into the nook and crannies. Our blood flow <laughs> has to seep into the nook and crannies. And the problem is that when we start to rush, we never get what you could call a clitoral erection. Even though it's not just the clitoris, there's the urethral sponge, which some people call the G spot. Um, but it's not a spot. It's actually a long tube. Yeah. It's it's the closest thing to a man's erectile tissue as as we have. And then we have a perineal sponge on the floor of our vagina, as well as the urethral sponge on the roof of our vagina. And then the legs and the arms wrap around the vagina. So we would not have to even touch the tip of our clitoris to have an orgasm. We can have an orgasm directly from just making love intercourse, but we rush and we don't get turned on. And then we also get bored. And the thing about desire is that it's a mathematical equation with two equal parts. You have to have safety. You have to feel comfortable. But there has to be novelty and variety for us to really get turned on. So we've got a guy who's hornier than we are every single day of the month. And we <laughs> have and flow on our 28-day cycles with the moon. And then he's got this fast-filling right. cavern in his pants. And we've got... The English muffin that takes time to <laughs> to toast, and, and for we the, have that for the so butter to seep through to, into all the of butter. the little crannies. <laughs> exactly, it makes my mouth water just thinking about it. <laughs> yeah, so he's got like boom, he's ready to go, and his testosterone, he's already ready to go, and then he's ready, ready to go. And one of the things that I tell men is the number one thing that you need to do is slow down, turn around, and come back and get me. Get me and get me where you already are. You're way ahead. And then testosterone makes them very goal-oriented. So instead of a lot of long leisurely foreplay, when they have an erection, they're just like ready to go. And so they rush sex often for us as women. And so you have this kind of compounded problem where you, you have sex too fast, you're not turned on, your orgasmic sensation doesn't reach its full potential. You're not really learning how to have lots of different kinds of orgasms, the 20 different kinds of orgasms you could be having because you're rushing it. You're not already having a good time. The new relationship energy is worn off and now you're bored because for the male body partner, generally intercourse feels so good. He's like, yeah, I mean, I'm happy. Yeah, I would take oral pleasure. Yes, I would give oral pleasure. Yes, I'd like <laughs> to hold you, but I want to get to the funnest part for me, which is intercourse. And so you've got just this comedy of errors of our biology and lack of knowledge and all of those things. Every time a par partner's hat make love and she doesn't have an incredible experience, it's like one more brick in the wall of the death of their sex life. Okay. And then over the years, she wants less and less sex and he gets more and more frustrated. He feels rejected. And then he starts to withhold his intimacy, his emotional connection to her. He just starts to do whatever needs to get done and just, you know, like gut out his marriage. And she he doesn't romance her anymore. He doesn't tell her she's beautiful anymore. He gets mad at her because he thinks she doesn't want him. And, and so 
all these things just are constantly happening in, in relationships. And that's really what keeps monogamy. That's what suppresses that upward spe- pleasure spiral of monogamy and having it be really, really hot and get better and better. So I spend a lot of my time teaching couples how to lay in a good foundation for super hot sex. And I'll say one final thing about it and then let you get a word in it. (laughs) No, um, no. Right, right. (laughs) But I like to set the, I like to set that whole scene as a foundation, you know, Mm -hmm. because it's kind of where we end up starting from. Um, One, what was I, oh, I was going to say one more thing. Um, I forgot what it was. I wanted to finish off with one, one thing that was very important about, uh, it'll come back to me probably. Okay. So yeah, <laughs> sorry about that. I interrupted myself. Right. <laughs> so when, when you went there and you realized, so the, let, let me start back a little bit further. So yeah. the first thing is that a lot of this is not taught because we initiate sex when we're younger and we just continue to have sex thinking that that's the way it's supposed to be without getting yeah. educated. So as you said, yeah. if you, right. what, if you don't know, you don't know. And so therefore you don't even know that you don't know what it is to make the sex better. So yeah. when, when couples are getting married and we're trying to stay in that, um, that beginning stage of, of thrill and seek mm-hmm. and pleasure, yes. how do we um, tell them what they can do to continue that early on? Right. So we yeah. get into a marriage. We can't wait for the honeymoon or, you know, as that whole said, phase. Right. You know, yeah. it was because when Jason phase. and I got married, you know, friends told us, OK, put a penny in the jar for every time you have sex. And then 10 years later, take a penny out of the jar every time you have sex and you'll still end up with, you know, a whole lot more pennies later. So, you know, even though that's not true for us, but that's usually how it goes. There is a spike in the beginning. Mm-hmm. And then somewhere, as you said, you hit Just, that wall. So that? how do we tell couples like going into it or, or where you are right now? This is where you need to start. And this is how this is what's going to make your sex relationship better. Therefore, your intimacy, you know, tighter or better, a closer knit. And it's going to make your relationship go to a whole new level. Yeah. The number one thing I recommend is scheduling erotic play dates. And I use those words very, very specifically. Scheduled sex means you have an agreement to get together and to really Mm -hmm. do something fun. And I say erotic play date because I didn't say sex. Um, Couples that learn new skills together over time are the ones that don't get bored and sex gets better. So so in addition to our date night, Uh we have to schedule erotic what is it? Play dates. Erotic play dates. So, so, so you can just go ahead and sign me up right now. I can tell you that right now. I'm gay. Yeah. I really like erotic play dates because there's so many things you can learn. I mean, even if all you did, um, one of the things I'm working on right now is a, what is it? A sex soaked summer orgasm challenge. <laughs> because I was writing these articles about the 20 kinds of male and the 20 kinds of female orgasm. And I thought, boy, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to break these up so you can learn one or two orgasm techniques a week for each person. And, you know, that's actually a pretty accelerated pace in all honesty. Hardly anyone would be able to keep up with it. But also people like to have novelty. So they want to hear about these things, even if they're not doing them. Mm -hmm. And if you think about it, most of us think that for the woman, an orgasm is a clitoral orgasm. Right. And for men, most, most people think that men have an orgasm and ejaculate. And they're actually separate systems in the body. And one of the best kinds of orgasms men can work on is to become full body, to have a full body energy orgasm where they can choose to ejaculate when they want to, but they don't need to ejaculate for it to feel orgasmic for them. Hmm. And for women, instead of thinking about everything being that little tip of the clitoris, the glands with the nerve endings, instead of being focused just on that, there's so many kinds of locations 
and types of orgasms that women can have. So, you know, you could have a G-spot orgasm, female ejaculatory orgasm. You can have nipple gasms and breast gasms and foot gasms and belly gasms and mouth gasms and all kinds of orgasms. So <laughs> then you can have expanded wow. orgasms where you learn how to take the moment of climax and stretch it out like taffy so that you can stay in orgasmic states that keep stacking with even more pleasure and lengthening over time. That's just one example of a kind of orgasm. At, at this age? I mean, I would have been working when I was younger. Well, I might just pass out. <laughs> <laughs> Having all different kind of states up. Yeah, if you if you do me like Taffy, that might be it. <laughs> I know that's true. But once you start bringing the orgasm into your body, you can expand it. You can connect your heart and your genitals together. A lot of times, for many men, their orgasms are very genital focused, mm -hmm. and they don't really feel it anywhere else. They don't really want to be touched anywhere else. And so expanding your sensual grid and being able to fill your body, connect your heart and genitals, connect your genitals to your brain, have your orgasms go out the top of your head and connect with, with God or source or Gaia. You can achieve ecstatic bliss states together where you're actually in a conjoined trance state of orgasm, riding it together. I mean, and, and for men, of course, there's spot orgasms and you know there's just many many different kinds of orgasms that the male body can have male body can have nipple gasms and oral gasms it's just that we don't we don't know we can or we don't try to do it and we don't right. know how to do it but once you teach someone how to do it they're like oh okay i can do that that's not bad i got that yeah i'm doing that now <laughs> right so, no so i didn't know about all those different orgasms that. no exactly people just don't know Right. And so exploring though the, the your your orgasmic potential together. And then there's things like fantasy and fetish and sex toys that are other avenues, role play and things like that. And then you get into exploring whether you are a visual, auditory or kinesthetic lover. And then you start to think about, okay, are we having like friction play where I'm doing my thing and you're doing your thing? Or are we actually connected and present together and interplaying off of each other? So that's another way that you can think about having great sex. And then there's another one, which is sex positions. So in sex positions, there's so many interesting positions that you can try that are really fun. Like I have a position called come full circle and it's actually, I think Jason and Tina Marie, I think you'd be really, you'd really probably really enjoy this. Um, <laughs> it's a double 360 degree sex position where Tina actually swirls around you, Jason, two times without coming disconnected. So you're connected together and she's twirling, twirling. around you. It's really fun one to try. It's like one of those, okay, on Thursday night, that's our that's our erotic play date. We're gonna do the come full circle. And then you're like, okay, wait, I think, I think my I think my arm goes here. No, no, no your, your your leg goes there. No, no, baby, baby, let me let me get you over there. Now here you go. Let me give you a little help, honey. Let me give you a little help. So that's like one that. of those that's that comeback where we come back and tell you the second time we come back, meet together for the second podcast and say, Well, this is really what happened. <laughs> so let me let me ask you for women. So I know you said that um, sex just got boring for you, right? And so often well, it wasn't satisfying, right? And 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 in so many marriages, that's true for the woman, right? Yeah. And the man too. Just, Don't forget about what, it. What happens with the men is they just pull away. But right. for women, you know, so many women just become because it's not satisfying mm -hmm. or because it's not stimulating, they become, yes. you know, bored and and it puts a barrier in the marriage. What yeah. can women do to first maybe um, it, it's a little embarrassing, right? So should women take take it upon themselves to find out to um, to learn themselves first and explore themselves first and then bring their mate along? Or should it be more of a couple in the very beginning? So women usually struggle in that area with sexual sexuality. Yeah. I think, 
I think it's yes to both. Having a solo pleasure practice, anytime you are having orgasms from any means, including sex toys, you are expanding your orgasmic potential. It's like anything, like sports, like learning to play an instrument, any learning. It's where your body is learning how to orgasm. And so often the easiest way is to do orgasmic cross training. I learned this from Sherry Winston. She's one of my mentors. And I loved loved her phrase, orgasmic cross training. We like cross training, don't we? Yes, we do. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And in that particular case, you would be giving yourself orgasms with a vibrator. And that's the other thing. A lot of women have a closet full of shoes and one skanky old bullet vibe in the bedside table. <laughs> we, need, we need as and, many vibrators as we do, as we have, do you have, as we have shoes, huh? <laughs> or, well, I mean, you can buy a couple of really good vibrators for a pair of Louboutins. So, <laughs> you know, priorities, ladies. Right. Yet those things hurt your feet, they you know? Do. Yes. And I would rather have a foot gasm than wear a pair of Louboutins. <laughs> but, and you can, you can literally, have footgasms from having your feet pleasured. And everyone can. This is not just a foot fetishist or something. This is like how our bodies work. You can have a belly gasm from having your tummy squeezed and that erectus abdominis and sensual energy being put into your belly. If we ladies would let our bellies be touched, because a lot of times we have shame, body shame, Yes. And body shame comes from being more estrogen dominant. Estrogen is a worry wart molecule. So where guys, they kind of have rose colored goggles. They always think they look better than they do. And they always <laughs> think they're, they're, they're better in bed than they are. And women, we think we're worse and we take all the problems on as our own issues and we don't think we're attractive. So there's just these kind of like physiologic tricks that have happened where we do come from a deficit sexually. And that's why I always say to men, if you can understand that we don't feel safe, that we don't have the testosterone that you do, and that we have that English muffin issue, and you can come back and stimulate us and give us the pleasuring that we need and do a little of that heavy lifting for us to get us over the line into our turn on. And then you know how to stair step our arousal because for a lot of men, they'll just start grabbing your yoni. I like the word yoni. Have you guys heard that word? I haven't. I have not, but okay. (laughs) Yeah. Women like that word. Y-O-N-I. It's a tantric lovemaking word. It's actually a Sanskrit word for the woman's genitals. And the Sanskrit word for the men's genitals is lingam. So lingam and yoni. When, um, when your yoni is really warmed up, you want it touched, but you don't want it touched too early. Wherefore, the guy, he wants his lingam touched right away. It's mm-hmm. calming right. for him yep. to have your hand on him. But if you grab her yoni too fast or just grab her breast too fast, we need... I always say it's like a bullseye. You think about a bullseye and you got to you got to work a from woman the from the outside in. in. <laughs> Erogenous zones, stroke my hair, hold me, kiss my cheeks, don't stick your tongue in my mouth, right? <laughs> well, you got to get us warmed up. That's how you get us up the arousal ladder. Once we get to a certain level of turn on, a certain level of all that butter seeping into that muffin, then we're ready for more and we want lots of stimulation and we want lots of sexiness and we want you to pick us up and move us around and you know have sex in this room and that room and buy us lingerie and slutty shoes and use vibrators on us and do all kinds of stuff to us then we're ready but it's hard for guys to remember that we are just really coming from behind and we need we need our men to help us get where we need to go so we can have the satisfaction that we're looking for. And vibrators are a great place to start solo pleasuring and having a few different kinds, like a a really nice wand to, to get all of the external tissue very engorged or filled with blood. And then, uh, internal kind of, um, you know, like, uh, more of a penis shaped vibrator in the inside 
And then maybe something, you know, different women like different sensations on their clitoris. Some, some women like the womanizer kind of wispy sucking type of thing. Other women like a little <laughs> kind of feeling and other women like, a bzz, 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 you know, and okay. every woman can learn to love them all as well. But if you're doing Yoni awakening, G-spot awakening, and really getting the blood flowing, she needs a lot of tools to get that job done. And they can be incorporated into lovemaking as well. Do you think men feel that's too too much time? Because men yeah. are, like you said, men yeah, are instant. Yeah, I could tell so, you that. I could tell you that for sure. You think? Majority, yeah. It takes a lot of time. It, it takes, I mean, listen, it don't take much for us to get started. Right. And then, you know, we got to like, okay, put that on hold. And then come back and get you and kind of get everything um, ready, which which works. And, you know, we've been there. We've done that. You know, it's like I'm going to work on you for a while. And if mm -hmm. I can work on you, then when we come together, man, oh, man, oh, man, the room's on fire. So, uh, but it takes some practice. So is, is that part of the the lack that marriages are having that once you come together and the newness has wore off? Men are now thinking, okay, well. Sex all the time. Sex all the time. And yeah. women are thinking, I, I need that continual um, foreplay, right? I need for you to take me on this ride in order for it to be enjoyable. So marriages are really suffering because men don't know that, we can, that women continually need that. And women are just kind of bored with the fact that men are just in a hurry and just are like instantly turned on. So what do we do to kind of bridge that gap? Most men will do whatever she needs to get turned on. If she is completely turned on and moaning and screaming and having an incredible time, coming and coming and coming and coming, that's what he wants. He just needs to know what to do. That's the most important thing. And, you know, unfortunately, men watch a lot of pornography. It's, uh, it is, um, it, pornography preys on men. Because men are biologically wired to masturbate. Women don't have that same need to masturbate that men do because men need to keep their sperm topped off and fresh because they have to be <laughs> ready to inseminate a woman. And so most men masturbate every single day at least one time a day. And then they have as much sex with their partner as they can get on top of that. That's the bell curve. That's the most common. And they would literally give up their own pleasure for their woman's pleasure. I think men do get a bad rap where a lot of women feel like they're selfish when in fact they're not selfish. They just really don't know what to do. And for women, they don't know what to do either. Yeah. Women are generally much more protected, if you will. Um, they, we don't, we don't think about sex as much. We don't hear about it. We don't watch it. And what we see on TV is terrible. It's like, you know, <laughs> he, he rips off her pants, leaves on her bra, like what? I don't have nipples and breasts. And, and then he just like t -t -t plunges inside her. And so we women think that we're supposed to respond to that and right. that that's supposed to feel good to us. And, you know, if it's a brand new lover, Maybe, maybe that would maybe that would be good, right? Uh -huh. It's a novelty and it's exciting. But after you do that for I don't know, a decade, <laughs> you don't you don't want to keep doing that anymore. Right, right. But generally it's just a lack of knowledge more than anything else. But here's another interesting thing. Of the, of every 100 people, if you put 100 random people in a room, only 15 of them actually care about their sex lives enough to do anything about learning something new. There are people who are personally, personal growth oriented. They have a mindset that says, when I learn things, my life improves and I become a better person and I am more satisfied. And that personal growth mindset has to align with their desire to be a sexual being. And when you Align those two things, you get 15 people out of 100. Not that many. Most people are having very mediocre sex, yep. very poor sex, very little sex. It's, it's, it's like you would look at them and be like, are you? That's what you guys do? Ooh, <laughs> that's 
you guys, you're leaving a lot of pleasure on the table. <laughs> and they just get consumed with other things. The kids consume them. Their work consumes, consumes them. them. Yeah. Their, you know, their community consumes them. Those are different priorities and that's okay. I always say that my job is to help the people who want to be helped and not not worry about everyone else. And what I do is I teach people how to transform having sex, which is what all the muggles are doing, to making love, which is what the wizards are doing. Okay. 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 Now, do you suggest, and I think you alluded to this in the beginning, that we need to schedule time? Or, uh, yeah, I think it's hard for women, though, to schedule. I think it's hard for women just period because of the shame. And and so dealing and talking with women and knowing women, you know, it's, yeah. you know, when it's sex is at because I think in most marriages, people are at that brink and we just kind of pull away. I think people pull away. And so I'm really I'm really concerned because most of the time it's the woman who pulls away, right? Because yeah. sex is just, right. so it is. when you say even scheduling it, I don't think that's going to help with the woman because again, they're scheduling something that they don't know what they're doing. So I think, well, we, I, I, that's not what I said though. Right, 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 right. right. No, him, he's okay. saying, do you schedule? He's trying to jump right, right in there. Right. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm, right, right. I didn't say schedule sex. Oh, I very specifically did not, not. say that. She did. I not. said schedule <laughs> erotic it, play dates. Exactly. Because erotic having play sex <laughs> with your husband is boring because he's going to do the same old thing. Exactly. He's been doing exactly. Right. So we yeah. have to make sure women understand you're scheduling erotic play dates, and men have to All understand right. that. And the point is being erotic that's the key word so i just took yeah. one for the team there right that's right, right. Yes. so i just walked right into that one okay cool you did <laughs> <laughs> there, she, there you went right down in that hole right, right. fellas you learn yes. from me so for the so, women out there, honey friday night when we have our scheduled erotic play date and you can call it whatever you want that's just my nerdy term <laughs> take it change it it's all good i would like to awaken your g-spot and I just want you to lie there and I'm going to play with your G-spot. I'm going to show you where it is. I'm going to pleasure it. I got this new G-spot toy. I'm going to try it out. I've got the room set up. I've got the water pitcher in there. I've got a candle on. I've got your favorite playlist going. And all you need to do, baby, is just lie on down and let me first work all the kinks out of your neck, give you a little foot rub, and then I'm going to work my way up to your G-spot and we're going to play with it. you're gonna love it um you could sign me up for that, I could totally do that. <laughs> would you not tina Ray? <laughs> you can sign me up for that uh, right okay. I would show and up. men love that they want to play with our yonis they want to get all in there they want to see what's <laughs> going on they want us Absolutely. to lie there and moan for them yes yes so ladies we have to Schedule. No, we have to break the shield. We have to take off the armor. Yeah, we have true. to allow ourselves to be pleasured. And I yes. think that's the issue. We're so women are so, you know, bundled up sometimes. They're afraid yeah. to let go mm -hmm. because of, like you said, the shame or the not knowing or I don't know, society standards of what it should be. So yeah. for the women out there who are not enjoying sex and don't know what to do. They're going to do what? Starting right after they hear this podcast, what are they going to do? Download seven stimulating sex positions. It's an illustrated guide that I created. And I think it's a really good on-ramp for a lot of cus uh, couples where um, it, I have these seven positions that I think are really, really good ones. And they include incorporating vibrators and sex toys into some of the positions. And it'll give you you two, a new thing to try that'll be fun because when you, when you want to have that, when you want to keep that new relationship energy going, you have to act like teenagers and teenagers, it's fun. Sex is fun when you're a late teen or yeah. an early twenties adult, because it's all new. Yeah. It's the new, it's the variety, the novelty, the new thing. And so a good on-ramp is sex positions because you end up doing your go-to positions because you know you can have <laughs> orgasms that way. Right, right. right. You, exactly. You, you end up with that go-to, right? That's absolutely yeah. true. But then you get bored. So <laughs> I always say there's so many things to learn, but start with sex positions because they can be really fun 
entertaining, and it can be a quick thing you do that kind of breathes new life in. So um, that's at sevenpositions.com. It's a free download. It's the number seven positions. It's really cute. Um, it's just my little illustrations. Um, and then it explains what to do and how to make it really fun and why I chose these seven. Now, there's another one that's also a good one. And that is that I have a technique that's called thrust in time. Of course, it's at thrustintime.com. It's free too. I give away a lot of free things <laughs> because I have to earn people's trust. Sure. And so I give a lot of things away. Um, and there are people who all they've ever done is consume my free content for a decade and they absolutely <laughs> love me and they've never bought anything and I don't care. I, 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 I do just fine teaching people all kinds of things. So the thrust in time is an interesting one if your partner, your male body partner has stamina issues. One in four men struggle with what is called premature ejaculation. Mm -hmm. And, and, um, you know, I don't, I don't love that term, but most people know what that is. Um, but men can l train themselves to last longer. And a lot of men are using coping mechanisms where they'll be thinking about something kind of negative, right. like okay. maybe doing yep. math or thinking about the granny's panties mm -hmm. or some weird thing like that. And just so that they don't come too fast right? because mm -hmm. they do want to satisfy her. But every time he's in his head worried, Absolutely. he's pulled away from her. Presence is the number one thing. Absolutely. When you ask a woman, it's actually the number two thing. When you ask a woman what she wants in a sexual partner, number one thing she says is good grooming. She doesn't want some skanky, stinky, icky, old, scratchy guy in her bed. She wants somebody with nice, clean fingernails, well-shaved, good manscaping. You know, she wants that. Number two thing she wants is emotional connection, presence you with to be present. the partner. Mm -hmm. I've heard that somewhere Heart before. connection. Exactly. It's, uh, it's what we want the most. But he gets nervous. And he starts to catastrophize. Oh, is it going to happen like it did last time? He's projecting disaster or he's worried about things that right. happened in the past or whatever. He needs to stay present. And so this thrust in time technique helps him last longer. I'll tell, I'm going to tell you how it works. And then it helps her have orgasms from intercourse, even not even touching her, the tip of her clitoris, not no vibrant, nothing. She just can have orgasms from intercourse because here's what else happens with couples intercourse. He watches porn and he thinks he needs to be a pile driver, a piston slammer. You know, he's like, yeah. I got to be like a jackrabbit. I got to pound her like I see on porn, you know? Right. And, and for women, yes, of course, sometimes we want that when we're very engorged and turned on. And that feels very good because we've got a lot of blood flow. The nooks and crannies are filled with butter. <laughs> but we are not ready for that. And as we age, we become more and more delicate over time as well, especially after having children, et cetera. And so the thrust in time technique uses a 10 count of stroking. And there's two kinds of strokes. There's what I would call short, shallow strokes, mm -hmm. and then long, deep strokes. And you basically do a count of 10. And this is what helps a guy last longer is that he actually has to hold the count in his head. So it gives him <laughs> something to think about, but he's totally present oh, to counting. So he's really paying attention to her. So he's got his, uh, his attention on her. And he, you essentially start with nine slow, short strokes. Now, this is when you're ready to enter her. There's many things that need to be done before you enter her. So I'm not saying you just jump on and start doing this, right? That's right. Well, I'm saying don't do that. This is what we're talking about foreplay and getting the nooks and crannies all buttery. Right. But the you do nine short, shallow strokes and then one long, deep stroke and then eight short, shallow strokes. And you're really watching her. You're really delivering those in a lovely way to her. And then two nice, long, deep strokes. By the time you get to four or five deep strokes, she's like, more deep strokes. <laughs> you know, she just wants a lot of deep strokes. But you don't want to give them to her too early. You've got to make her want them. The way our body's nervous system works, we have the sympathetic and the parasympathetic nervous system. And you need to toggle back and forth between them. 
like a, a lot of times what happens when, you know how there's some women who are like one and done, like I had my orgasm, I'm too sensitive, I don't want to keep going. It's because she's getting overclocked. She's getting driven too hard to get to the first one instead of easing into the first one so she can keep going and have more and more and more. We are all, all homo sapiens, no matter whether you're male or female sex, no matter where you are across the gender spectrum, we have an infinite capacity for orgasm. Men and women have exactly the same parts arranged in different order, and we can come the same ways from the same stimulation. Men can be massively multi-orgasmic with out ejaculating. They just don't know they can. Right. We women can have incre- we have a G spot, a guy has a B spot. It's the same thing. We just aren't taking advantage of all of these wonderful spots that we have. Men don't think their nipples are sensitive, so or they're like they th- or they think there's, you know, they won't explore their back door or whatever, you know, it's mm-hmm. it's all there to be enjoyed and pleasured when you're ready. And that's what's nice about sex is the better you get at sex, the more things there are to do, there, you, you're always on that upward pleasure spiral. There's always more to explore. But the thrusting, by the time she gets to, by the time he gets to four or five long deep strokes, it is very likely she's going to be able to cross that gasm chasm, bridge the orgasm gap between how easy it is, almost too easy for him to have to come, mm-hmm. and how hard it is for her to come for most women. And this is the thrust and time technique that slows him down and in a way speeds her up, gets her closer, more easily orgasmic from intercourse. And if you're in a monogamous heterosexual relationship and you're not coming from intercourse as a woman, you're just not going to, you're not going to be able to go the distance for all the years you want to be married together. And that's going to drive a wedge in your relationship. Orgasms from intercourse are a learnable skill. Every woman can do it. All right, ladies, you hear that? Don't think I'm just the kind of girl, my clitoris is too far from my vagina. That's bold. You just need to learn how to do it with a little orgasmic cross training, starting with self-pleasuring, trying thrust in time, awakening your G spot, you know, incorporating some toys till you get there. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh, now I can come the whole time he's inside me. So what about women who may um, suffer from some type of physical, you know, ladies problem, you know? So, yeah, well, um, we all have things that happen to our genitals. One of the worst is we get old (laughs) and um, we, you know, as we begin to wrinkle, as our skin begins to wrinkle, as we age, everything is wrinkling. Everything is basically shriveling up and drying out. That's the aging process. And it's called atrophy. The penis atrophies and so does the vagina. So does the clitoral structure. So there are a number of things you can do and they're in the category of sexual regenerative treatments. There are, there are the, the PRP techniques, P shots and O shots, the Priapus shot for men, the orgasm shot for women takes a little bit of your own blood, spin the doctor spins it down, and takes a small syringe with just the fibrin-rich matrix of PRP, which has growth factors and healing factors from your own body, injected right back into that spongy tissue. It soaks it up and it regenerates new tissue. It makes your tissue more youthful. If you're 50 or 60 and you have a couple of O shots, you're going to feel like you're coming again like you were 30, only probably you're a better comer at 50 than you were at 30 (laughs) because you've had 20 more years of coming, (laughs) right? Just lovers get better. I mean, 60-year-old lovers are the best lovers because we know so much more, but we have to reverse the atrophy of aging. For men, penis pumps, a vacuum erection device is a fantastic tool. I have helped thousands and thousands of men trust that pumping works. I have, uh, I work with a brand called the Whopper and it works for penis enlargement as well as just simply reversing atrophy and reversing erectile dysfunction, which is generally just a loss of blood flow. 
You can take a nitric oxide supplement. I own a supplement company. I make a nitric oxide supplement that helps women get their lubrication back, increase sensation again. It helps men reverse erectile dysfunction. It helps them if they have to take Viagra or another PDE5 inhibitor. They would they can take a lot less of it. They can take a mini dose instead of a full dose so they can sidestep the side effects of Viagra if they still need to take some. Uh, there's gains wave treatments for men, Femi wave for women, which uses an acoustic sound technology that actually knocks the plaque off of the pedendal arteries so that you're getting full blood flow again that you lost, as well as generating and stimulating new tissue growth in the vulva or the penis. There's now the Phoenix Pro, which is an at-home tool for doing the acoustic wave technology to yourself. If you don't live near a Gaines Wave provider, or you're just the kind of person who's like, if there's a tool for that, I need to own it. A <laughs> lot of guys are like super DIY, right? They don't want anybody <laughs> touching their penis in an office, but they will buy a tool and do it at home. Whatever, whatever works for you, as long as you know that you can reverse it, bioidentical hormone replacement, you can use the V-Fit. The V-Fit is a fantastic intravaginal device that uses low-level light therapy, red light therapy, therapy, photobiomodulation. It's red light inserted into the vagina with vibration and warmth that recollagenates the tissue and brings new growth to the vaginal mucosa. It's all about blood flow because for women, our lubrication comes from our blood plasma. When we get turned on and aroused, when we have time to get our muffin buttered, when the blood is flowing into our pelvis, then it can seep through the layers of the vaginal mucosa and wet our vagina. If we're dry, we don't feel turned on. If we're wet, we feel, oh, okay, yeah, I, I do. I feel better now. I feel like I could have sex now. So we women deal with loss of lubrication, incontinence, which is where the right. musculature is sagging from the bladder and pressing down on the vagina. And um, we, so we suffer from loss of lubrication, loss of sensation and incontinence, thinning tissue from loss of estrogen, which we can use intravaginal creams to work on as well as the V-Fit. So like, there's not a problem that can't be fixed. All, right. All this stuff can be reversed. You can have banging boners and, you know, sweet little dripping yonis in your 50s, your 60s, and your 70s and beyond. If you just take, it's, I call it hashtag self-care down there. All There's right. so many things that can be done. There's so many procedures now. And so what is the communication? I know you talked about the sex and then you have yeah. to have communication. Right. You have to be able to talk yeah. about this right. stuff. So what is the communication couples can have um, yeah. in, in, bringing this to each other because, you know, people don't talk about sex. That's right, one thing. Right. So and most couples, if they're having an issue right. and it's in the bedroom, like you said, they're finding themselves outside of the home, making them preoccupied. Right. So how do you bring this conversation to your mate? You know what? Hey, look, I don't want a divorce and, or right. we're just terrible in the bed. So communication, teaching people how to communicate effectively so that they can get to that point of having great sex. Well, the biggest issue, honestly, is that women are afraid to hurt their male partner's feelings. And they feel like, well, I don't know what I want. I just know what I'm getting isn't it. Right. right. So I'm not going to say true. anything because I can't offer any constructive advice. And one of the things that I say to women is that you do know what you want. It's inside you. You don't need any website or magazine or erotic book or pornography or movies or your girlfriend's sex life or anything to inform your desire. You have all the desire you need within you right now and your body knows what she wants. She knows what she wants every second of the day. If you listen to her, so it's trusting your own body's wisdom, your own intuitive connection to your essential self, loving yourself and having an open heart for yourself, being willing to give yourself pleasure and allow pleasure. Yeah. And then when you realize that you are an animal 
we homo sapiens, you know, if you look up in the tree of life and there's the dolphins and the whales and the ponies and the puppies and the kitties and the tigers and the great apes. And on the the branch of the great ape tree is the bonobos and the chimpanzees and the orangutans and the homo sapiens. We're right there. We are primates. We are great apes. We just think we're better than all the other animals. And I honestly think they know a lot more than we do. (laughs) So when we realize that we live in a body that has a 28-day cycle, that we have a five-day horny window where we where we might actually initiate sex and the other, you know, rest of the month, we're, we're like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> <You> know? <laughs> How many times have you, have you had sex and at the end you were like, well, I don't know why I was resisting so much. That was fantastic. Absolutely. Like pretty yeah. much every time. Right? Yeah, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> Got to get past that the entire stage first, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. And that's what we need. We need our men to do some heavy lifting in the beginning to get our flames ignited, heavy to get lifting. us off the ground. Right. Okay. All right. Need yeah. Our men. But they, but they can enjoy that. Men like a job. They can do well. Men are up for, for a the challenge. Test. <laughs> they are the perfect partner to us women in many ways. Not that gender same or gender non-binary people are any different. Right. You know, we're born either XX or XY. So we're either born into a male or a female body. We right. are that. But our gender expression is totally up to us and how we choose to express that. But the mo- most people are in the male-female dynamic. And the, the communication has to get to the point where our partner needs to understand that every day we're a little bit different, that they're a lot more steady state than we are. They're, they're pretty much horny all the time, every day, where we're not so much and we need their help. And what felt good yesterday doesn't necessarily <laughs> feel good today. That's why we're so confounding to them. They're like, well, yep. I did this exact thing to you the last time we had sex and you went crazy and now you're just lying there like, yeah, what are you doing? doing? Why are you doing that? Why are you doing that? Why are you doing that? And we get all pissed when you do it too. We're like, what are you doing that for? And you're like, because this is what made you scream the last time I did it. And you're like, oh, well, I don't like it today. And the, they just can't understand that. That is how we are. And it's frustrating for us as women to be women too. Trust me. We don't like it when we're like, the, nah, 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 nah. like we see ourselves doing it and we're like, can you stop? And you're like, no, nah, I can't. I can't stop. You know, like it's just annoying. But that's because we live in an animal body. It's run by our hormones. It's managed by our neurotransmitters. It's it's subject to how much sleep we've had, how annoying our kids have been, how annoying our job has been, how much sleep we have gotten, all that stuff. So when we can say to our partner, I need you to hold me and maybe I'll feel like having sex after that. I need you to give me, I need you to rub my feet. I need you to rub my neck. I need a belly rub. I want to make out. I, you. When was the last time you bought me flowers? You know, whatever it is. <laughs> right. I need right. you to show me more attention. You haven't said three words to me all day and now you want sex, whatever it is. When your partner gets feedback, instead of taking it personally, right. what I like to do is, and this is really what the sexual soulmate pact does. It's an agreement between partners where I'm just going to tell you what's going on with me. I'm going to fill you in because I'm living in this animal body and I got no control over her. So I have very little control over her. So I'm just going to tell you what she's telling me. I'm going to listen to her. I'm going to tell you what I know. Then we're (laughs) on the same team. We're going to basically work together to try to get this animal body I live in to get turned on so we can have the hot sex we both want. And everything that I say to you You're going to be like, thank you, baby. I got it. How is this? Because what I also need as a female is constant encouragement and approval. And I hate that I need that because my hormone makes me feel insecure, worried, et cetera. It's the hand I've been dealt. And so we're going to work together. My husband and I call ourselves Team Sweetie. Okay. We are team sweetie and we just work together. So like, I'm like, all right, I want to have sex. Let's get it going. Here we go. <laughs> what, do you, where, what, what do I need? Here's what I think I need. Let's just start there. And, and one of the things we try to do too, is we try to mix it up a lot, you know, like, um, 
he'll give me a yoni massage and then maybe I'll use my vibrator while he plays with my breasts and then we'll have a little intercourse and then I'll go down on him and then he'll go down on me and then I'll get out a different vibrator and we'll do something else and mixing it up and incorporating toys and trying lots of things and lots of communication really makes it a lot more fun than just doing the same old thing all the time. So the more you say, here's what I need, and he says, got it. Thank you, baby. How's this? Then you feel safe to say what your body is telling you it needs. Uh And then you're on the same team, and then you are winning. I think women, some women are so guarded. Sure. You know, as far as sex, because we're raised in a society where that's something that you don't talk about, something you don't express, something you don't learn. So- Women grow up being so guarded that they cannot enjoy sex when they get married because they don't know what to do or how to enjoy it. Right, because so you're think, not being a good girl if, you, if you're if right. talking about sex and you want sex exactly. like that. Yeah. So I think we have to, ladies, we have to let our guards down and communicate what to our mates what it is we're looking for, what it yeah. is that turns us on, what makes us feel good. And if they don't know, they can't provide it. So, and, and men, we need to listen. If they tell us they need this, we need to give it to them because yeah. it's going to benefit both of us. Yes. So just take time, slow down. Everybody's yeah. going to get theirs. You, know, <laughs> yeah. you might have to. Be <laughs> right, right. <laughs> I'll <laughs> tell you, if I heard Jason talking to me in the bedroom, I would do anything he wanted. <laughs> <laughs> so slow down. When, he's, when he says, good girl, I'm all his. <laughs> <laughs> so we're, we're going to make sure that sex is going to get better in these relationships. Yes. And Susan is going to help us. Yes. And we're going to start learning, right, Susan? Because everyone can yeah. learn. Not everyone wants to, though. That's the thing, Tina Marie. Remember when I talked about the 15 people? In that room, You know, probably everyone listening to this episode of your show is interested. The ones who aren't listening aren't interested. You can't save everyone. But what you can do is know we're different. Here's how you bridge that gap. Here's how you cross the gasm chasm. This is the orgasmic cross training. This is the bullseye touch technique. This is thrust in time. If you've got stamina issues or trouble having orgasms from intercourse, buy yourself some vibrators, schedule some fun play dates to learn some new sex, learn about orgasm, expand your orgasmic potential, um, try new things because throughout your life, your sex life just gives back over. And it's like learning how to cook. If you are a good cook, you keep getting to be a better and better cook your whole life. And it it's constantly nourishing you. Right. You're always eating better than everyone else. It's the same with sex. When you're learning sex skills and you realize how much there is to explore, it is the gift that keeps giving back. Number one, it increases your confidence. It gives you more of a sense of passion in your life. You feel like you live a more exciting life. Absolutely. And you get the benefit of not only all, especially if you're in a heterosexual pairing, you get the benefit of all the benefits of his semen, which has luteinizing hormones, serotonin for mood lifting, testosterone to give you more courage and confidence, um, things that regulate your, it gives you zinc for mental function. It gives you things that regulate your menstrual cycle. So many good things come from your partner's semen. And then you have the co-creation of the oxytocin that bonds you and the release of all kinds of feel good chemicals when you have orgasms. All of that is healthy. And you get those bursts of vascular expression, which keep your heart in good shape as well. And sex, when you're doing sex positions and things like that, it's keeping you limber and it's keeping you young. I mean, (laughs) you can tell if I put two women in front of you exactly the same age, grew up in the same town, they have the same basic socioeconomic situation, and one was having hot sex and the other one was not. You know, you could pick it. Pretty much. <laughs> Pretty much. Can you pick that pin up? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Very stiff, huh? The other person's like, oh, what? Wait. wait. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we are definitely trying to um, open up our sexuality in our relationships. Yeah, yeah well, that good. gap. I know I learned a lot. Um, 
just understanding. I know I didn't understand that men had multiple ways of having an orgasm. I didn't 20. know that. You said 20? Yeah. Wow. Uh, there's 19 other ones I need to figure out. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, right. they're free. Because they're free downloads. When, we can, you know, some of them we can, we can try yeah. out. <laughs> yeah. Well, and what's nice too is that when you start to become a, a multi-orgasmic man, when you can have orgasms without ejaculating, and then you can start to have a whole bunch of orgasms while you're making love. Imagine when you're making love, let's just say you're having intercourse because, mm-hmm. you know, making love could be any number of things. Having sex can be any number of things. Imagine if you're making love and you're inside and you're having orgasm after orgasm. What's going to happen to your partner? It's like tuning forks. You know how if you have a tuning fork and you hit it against a hard That's surface mm-hmm. and then you hold another tuning fork up and it starts to vibrate at that same wavelength that it starts to make its tune. Mm-hmm. That's what it's like. Uh, the difference between a man who is holding back, trying not to come, try, you know, like struggling and just like focused on her and trying to push her buttons and spin her knobs. And, you know, he's just like strategy, strategizing and he's up in his head and he's, you know, all around his performance and he's crushed if she doesn't come. And then you have a guy where he's coming the whole time too. He's like, oh my God, he's expressing how incredible it is. He's able to tell her how sexy she is. He's an incredible, she's an incredible pleasure. They're just like, just like working off each other. Everything is just an interplay. They're just coming and coming and coming and it's incredible. That's what happens when you begin to like have the choice to ejaculate or not because you know you don't have to just to have the orgasm. And then you can come whenever you want to. Ejaculatory choice is a very powerful skill for the masculine person in the relationship. Wow. I learned something new there too. (laughs) I thought orgasm was ejaculation, but I guess it's not. (laughs) It's not. Okay. That's just one way. All All right. right. Yeah. Well, that's, well, that's cool. Hey, this was well worth the, uh, uh, the conversation, man. I thought I knew a lot. Good. I, yeah, yeah. I learned. Well, I'm sure I learned you do a know a lot. It's just that there's a lot more to know, <laughs> which is what makes right. it fun. Right. When you don't know, you don't know. You don't know, but, but now what? that I know. But guess what? The good yeah. thing is that you we can always keep learning. Watch right? out, baby, because I learned some stuff. <laughs> I can't wait to try some of this stuff out. So what are you going to try? Are you going to try the sex, the seven, seven positions? Or are you going to try the crazy come full circle? I think, honestly, I think you got to get Tina Marie spinning around on you. I think you should try that come full circle. I'm going to try it's that and the positions. And I'm yeah, going to try good. the erotic date. So you're going to have to put me right. on the calendar. All right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yep. Schedule them. Yep. You schedule me for that erotic payday. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Right. I mean, date nights are one thing, but if, if you gave me the choice between an erotic play date and a date night, I'd be like, let's have a sandwich and go in the bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Or let's go in the bedroom and I'll give you a sandwich after. <laughs> <laughs> right. Let's not even waste any time with the food. <laughs> so um, let's give us, if you could give the couples out there one huge gem, something they can take away from this, what would that be in regards to sex and intimacy? Have more fun. Try new things. Learn together. Keep it hot. There's, it's, an, it will, you, I, I won't run out of things to teach you. Don't worry. You can't learn it all. I'm way ahead of you. It's okay. You got <laughs> years. Uh, it would be that. And for me, I think it would be the Sexual Soulmate Pact, P A C T, at sexualsoulmatepact.com. It's the one technique that is the granddaddy of all techniques or the grandmommy of all techniques because. Just like arousal sits in a foundation of relaxation, you can't get turned on if you're jacked. You've got to be calm so you can let arousal begin. You can't have hot sex until you have totally free communication where nobody's feelings ever get hurt because you realize you're animals and you're just telling each other what you need in every moment and what you want, and what your current freak is, and oh, I thought of this thing that I want to do. And what's nice is when you start to talk to each other, and you start to share your fantasies with each other, they're in there. You don't need to, You don't, no one needs to tell you what they are. I promise you have a deeply dirty reservoir of super <laughs> sexy stuff you're going to want to do. I promise. It does not live out here. It lives in here, and it's waiting for you to be like, Oh, you want that? Mm, all right. Let me tell you what she wants. 
All right, couples, let's get to work. Let's yeah, we got work. some work to do. And I think that um, helping, you know, sex always makes things better. It does. Right? Yeah. Starts my day off great. <laughs> Mine too. <laughs> So, Susan, how do they get in contact with you? I know you, I know you gave us some of them, but give, give me all of them. Let us know how we can get in contact with you. Let me know what's free. Just, just give it all to me. Okay. So we talked about Come Full Circle. That's C-U-M-F-U-L-L-C-I-R-C-L-E, Come Full Circle. We talked about the seven stimulating sex positions. That's at the number seven positions.com. We talked about um, the sexual soulmate pact, the one sex technique that is the, you know, Ace, Queen, King, and Joker. That's at sexualsoulmatepact.com. Um, do we talk about anything else? No, oh, those are the three. I those think are we're the talking. three mm-hmm. big ones we talked about this <laughs> time. Positions and then that one yeah. crazy spinner fun one. You just <laughs> yes. got to do it one time. You got to be like, check. We did it. High five. You know what I mean? Like, we did that's it. We're like, but but yeah. yes, I did do it. <laughs> <laughs> And you'll laugh the whole time, which is what you're supposed to be doing is having fun, right? You know, that's the thing. It's not serious. It's pleasure, people. So those three. And then if you want to find, and and if you opt in for any of those free gifts, you get on my sex tips newsletter. Okay. Wherein I am a font of sex tips that you get for free. So, you know, that's really fun. I teach you anything and everything about sex that you could possibly imagine. And then, uh, and I'm constantly writing, like I, I was writing just before I came on this show about the orgasm challenge, about the, what is a s- sex soaked summer orgasm challenge that I'm working on right now. Like I'm always coming up with fun things for you guys. So okay. don't you worry. I will not be leaving you. I've been here for 15 years, churning out hot sex. All stuff. right. Oh, All right. Wonderful. So every month we're going to look forward to something new. Oh, not even every month you know, every week I send out oh, a tech weekly right. news yeah, right. tips, and I sex tips. so many. We talk about dirty talk. We talk about, I teach you how to talk dirty to each other in a (laughs) nice way. I don't actually like dirty talk. I think it's more like central talk, pillow talk, erotic worship. You know, these are the kinds of things I like. Classy, Mm -hmm. classy, sexy, not, you know, corny. I don't, I don't like that. So um, personal life media is my main website. I have hundreds of videos at betterlover.com on everything you could think of. And there's a search tool on there. So anything that I've said, you could go there and search it and you'll find a video I've done on it. And then if you want to follow me on Instagram, that's more like, all right, I like that Susan Bratton. That girl was fun. I'm going to follow her on Instagram. (laughs) That's mostly just me wearing crazy costumes and putting pictures up. I don't do much sex techniques on there, but that's my name, Susan Bratton. So you can find me there as well. So that's that's pretty much what I do. How about your supplements for people who may want to use some of the supplements? Why don't I send you guys some? I have two things. I have Desire, which is a daily vitamin mineral. It's like your one a day with a little something more because it has a libido botanical in it. Oh, wow. Okay. And I have three different Desires with three different libido botanicals. You take one the first month, the next month you take the next one, the third month you take the, the next one, and then you start over. Because with herbal botanicals, you take the same thing all the time and your body acclimatizes to yeah. it, acclimates yeah, to like, it. Yeah. So you got to like, no, nope, now I'm giving you this one. Now you're going to get hornier in a different way, you know? So, <laughs> <laughs> And the thing is, I didn't want to make libido botanicals when I knew people weren't getting enough magnesium, enough boron, enough vitamin D, enough vitamin K. And they have an activated B complex, not a cheap B complex, an activated one that's highly bioavailable so that you get energy and vitality and a lust for life too. So we can spin so, with energy. Exactly. Sweet. So I get desire <laughs> is exactly sweet. Tina is already planning on this. God, I wish I could see that. Um, it's going to be so cute. You guys are going to have a blast. Definitely uh, email me or call me when you've done it and tell me how fun it was. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. So desire is my vitamin line and then flow is my supplement for blood flow. And it helps with erectile firmness. It gets the blood into the penis, the blood into the, this is what butters that English muffin. It gets the blood into all those nooks and crannies of our lady parts. And then if you think about it, if you have a small little tiny clitoris and then you expand it with blood, you've got more surface area. If you have more surface area, it sends more pleasure signals to the brain. 
So not only does it increase lubrication, but it increases sensation. So you'll come better, which is very nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, shoot, me your, shoot me your address and I'll send you guys some bottles. Okay. Sounds good. Sounds and that's good. at The 20 Store, T-H-E-2-0 store.com the 20 store it's the 80 20 rule it's the 20 percent of stuff that actually gets the results not the 80 percent of stuff that doesn't do anything it just okay got it got oh, it you're getting rid of the fluff and going right for it okay right for it you yeah. know i go for it yeah <laughs> well i have enjoyed this conversation i hope Good, our viewers too. have too i'm sure they have I'm we've learned the a lot rooms start to spark up and, yeah. we're and we start getting letters saying wow right that, that Sex talk was awesome. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're going to come back. And they tried to come full circle and they're like, we did it too. So, right. uh huh. <laughs> right. 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 Not that I'm competitive. <laughs> right. <laughs> but I am. Right. That's right. a challenge right. in exactly. itself right there. Exactly. <laughs> well, thank you so much. And I think that ends it for this episode. Is there anything else you would like to say before we end this fantastic episode? No, just that I enjoy you both so much. And it's been a real pleasure. Thank you for having me. And thanks for broaching a subject that is sometimes scary for people. You made it great. It is. It yeah. truly is. And we have to, you know, just let our hair down. Yep. You know, when we're in relationships, just let our hair down and just be, right? Like you said, that's that's inside of us. Let's make that a part of our marriage without being ashamed. Yeah, let's right? not be shameful about it. Right. I mean, you know, what? we have to talk about it. My parents didn't do that, but we can change it. All right, so yeah, let's, let's go ahead and have some wonderful. Th- oh yeah, Ooh, <laughs> I can't even finish my thought. You said that you just knocked me off my game. Yeah, let's make let's let's make sex fun. Let's have fun in the bedroom. Yes, <laughs> definitely. I'm with you with that, baby. All right. So as always, <laughs> we're, we're in, in it to win, win it. it. Thanks for listening to this week's episode of Loving Beyond the I Do podcast. Head over to iTunes to subscribe and leave a review. Follow us on Instagram and Facebook at Legendary Relationship or visit our website at LegendaryRelationship.com. Till next time, remember to make every day count.